Hello and welcome to the We Are Changing Lives Hero Panel. I'm Holly with the American Red Cross and I am so excited to share more about our Red Cross heroes. And I am thrilled for our viewers today to be able to meet each of you. Our audience may have gotten a glimpse already of some of the actions of our heroes and their stories, but I'd love to get started with each of you introducing yourself so that we can hear directly from you. Let's get started with our education hero, Fallon Carpenter. Can you please introduce yourself for us? Start off, my name is Fallon Carpenter. I am currently a mentor with Friends of the Children Chicago, which is an organization that mentors youth from the time they're in kindergarten until they graduate high school. I have currently eight youth, eight girls. I have six second graders and two third graders. Um, the second graders I've had since kindergarten and the third graders I've had since second grade. So what we do is we spend four hours a week with each one of our youth two hours with being in class, in school with them, and then two hours outside of class. And it's really been a challenge, especially with the pandemic and um, doing remote learning. So um, that's what we've been focusing on is making sure our kids are able to log in and participate in remote learning, making sure they have the tools that they need, the laptops, the internet connection, and making sure their parents are able to um, log in and participate. Excellent. I'm sure you're making a huge difference in their lives through with education, which is so important. So on to our firefighter hero, Lieutenant Quentin Curtis of Chicago. Can you please introduce yourself for us? Hi, Holly. Thank you for having me. My name is Quentin Curtis, founder and president of the Black Fire Brigade. Uh, we started the Fire Brigade June of 2018. And since the conception of it, we put 332 kids through the school, eight 83 single moms and six homeless kids. That's great. Thank you, Quentin. And now we'll move over to our law enforcement hero. That's Sergeant Joe Danforth. So can you share a little bit more about your story with us? Okay, I've been a policeman for 25 years. Um, I started my basketball program probably ooh, like 17 years ago. I started out just as a basketball program. Um, and then all of a sudden became a mentoring program. Um, I've had a couple homeless kids in the program. Um, I've always got uh, kids with single moms, single parent homes. Uh, we probably sponsor probably about five to ten thousand uh, dollars in the program every year uh, with the kids uh, from travel, to uniforms, to fees. Um, a lot of it is. Uh, uh, trying to get these guys prepared to go to college. Um, the program is an athletic program. Um, it keeps a lot of them off the streets and, uh, you know, um, getting them into school. Um, I probably, over the years, over the last 10 years, I've probably been able to get like 50 kids into school for free. And um, that's pretty much the basis of how the program works. Excellent. What a great resource you're providing. So happy to have you here with us, Joe. Thanks. And we'll move on to uh, Division Chief Michelle Panko. Can you please introduce yourself to us and the group? Michelle Panko, Division Chief of Operations for the Rockford Fire Department. I've been with um, the fire department for well over 28 years now. So um, in addition to operations, um, I'm also responsible for the emergency services disaster portion um, here in the city of Rockford. So that means activating our emergency operations center uh, in response to typically prior to COVID would be um, flash flooding, uh, river flooding, uh, maybe tornado or straight line winds. Um, but then uh, March 12th, of 2020, we activated our emergency operations center in conjunction with the county in response to COVID. Uh, and our very, very first mission was how are we going to feed the kids? So the kids were um, off of school. School was canceled, um, not indefinitely at that point. We were looking at about two week time frame, and obviously that grew. So we did everything from that to um, very shortly after. Um, PPE was the absolute, um, it was one of the most difficult things to find. So we developed a pretty um, robust logistics section in response to shortage of PPE. 
um, to working with everybody from city departments, law enforcement, public works, human services, to external agencies, obviously the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, not one stone was left unturned um, in, in the response to COVID. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Chief, for, for sharing with us. And thank all of you for all the work that you've done in your communities. It's amazing to see the effects of these, these things. You put so much work and effort behind. So I want to move on and talk a little bit more about how the work you're doing was changed and altered during the pandemic. So we'll go over to uh, Sergeant Danforth now. Now you've been working directly with kids and kids are usually very resilient and we can learn so much from them, but how have you experienced that? What, how, how is your program? How is the impact of it um, going forward? And what are you taking away from, from this experience? In the early stages of COVID, it was rough because um, nobody really knew what you could and couldn't do. So, you know, and when you're dealing with athletes, especially kids being athletes, you know, sports is what motivates them to do school work and everything else. So they feel like if they don't have that, then, you know, and I'm not going to do my work. So me and my coaches, uh, we set up stuff at the park, getting them out, at least running them, uh, doing stuff in the parking lots, running hills. So we're doing all that just to keep them, you know, from sitting in the house all day. And then we were calling and checking on them, making sure everybody was logged in, doing their work and everything. And so when we finally did get sports back, I want to say out of our, I want to say out of our 50 kids, we only had two kids that were that were ineligible. So we did a good job keeping them motivated and, uh, you know, ready to get back out there and play and, and do what they do um, that's, I mean, it's so great to hear directly from you who've been working with kids and hearing the responses and how it's impacting the work that you're doing is making such a difference. So thank you. So uh, we'll move on to um, Lieutenant Curtis or Q. Um, how has that, how has what your work been doing during this time? How is it inspiring you? It's, it's really inspired me. The, the kids have really inspired me. Uh, like I say, we had to ramp up and spread out. So our kids were all front line as, um, as with COVID. I don't think a lot of people understand that the, the EMTs were your front line workers. So our team was one of your front line workers. And we continued training during COVID because everybody's like, well, why are you guys going to continue tra training? I said, as people go down, as we lose doctors, nurses, and things like that, who's going to be, who's going to step up? Who's going to be prepared to go? So the EMTs became so important because they had a lot of, baseline information. We taught PPEs, we, you know, which is personal protective equipment. Um, we taught how to safeguard. We talked about uh, dieting, the proper things, the vitamins and things like that. So our kids had really ramped up and stepped up, you know, in the Chicagoland area. Now we've moved into the vaccination uh, phase of it. So our kids are now into the vaccination uh, side of it. That's such great work. And it's amazing the experience that they're going to have, you know, because of, because of this and because of your leadership. So that's really great. Thank you so much. And then of course, we'll go to Fallon. Uh, how, how has this pandemic affected you and how has it inspired you? You've been right up in it, uh, dealing with education and the pandemic, like it's such a difficult thing. So what has been your inspiration to keep you going through this? The biggest change, as I stated before, is that our program is built on really having one-on-one -on -one interaction with our kids. And because of the pandemic, we weren't able to see them in person. So everything went virtual. And that has been a challenge. Not only has remote learning been a challenge, but just having our outings virtually because you're trying to get children who are already doing remote learning to still have more time with you on the computer and then trying to figure out different things. You have to be really creative to keep them engaged. You know, this pandemic brought to light so many more challenges. And this group of heroes really rose to try to meet them, which is so amazing on top of all the work you were doing before. So again, I'm just so impressed by all this work. So my next question as we move forward is something you've touched on a little bit already, but what's your vision for the future? And Fallon, we'll go back to you. How are you planning on moving forward to continue shaping the future and giving kids resources? Because you've given so many and you've risen to this challenge, but how do you see that moving forward? Well, hopefully um, we can get back to being one-on-one -on -one outings where we're taking the kids 
outside of their communities and exposing them to different things and having that interaction, um, I think it's really important. Just this small part of having a mentor can make such an impact, a huge impact on a kid and having them so young really makes it really makes it better because you always get kids at 15, 16 and want to give them a mentor. By then their minds are kind of shaped and it's it's bigger, it's a bit of it's a bit of a challenge to do that. But starting with them so young, they're very impressionable and they pay attention, they latch on to things and you can teach them. So I just want to continue to keep doing the work that I'm doing, engaging with my youth, exposing them to different things and keep encouraging them. Absolutely. Maintaining that optimism for the future is so important too. So thank you so much, Fallon. Uh, now we'll go to Chief Pankow. What is your v- vision for the future ahead and what you're working on? Uh, So I would have to say that I was absolutely amazed at how um, our community came together. Like I had said earlier, um, we had so many different uh, folks represented in our emergency operations center and then just wanting to help. Um, So I was amazed, truly amazed by that. Um, The same with my coworkers on the fire department. We had to rise to a completely different um, mindset and challenge in our response to co or our, our response to COVID. So my vision for the future is that we don't forget that. Uh, whether it's you're working in the emergency operations center as part of a group or a team trying to critically think a problem and solve it, or if you're responding to a call on the fire department, um, whatever it is that you're doing, um, that's what that's where I saw it. Um, but just you know, my my vision is that we don't forget that we were able to all come together and work together to solve the problem. Thank you, Michelle. I'd love to go around one more time and just get one last piece of advice, a comment from each of our heroes. And we'll go back to Joe. So I know that you you just said that that's some of the biggest takeaways you have. Uh, is there anything else that you could bestow upon us? You know, um, I, I think that, you know, people in service positions like we are need to be more involved in, uh, it's unfortunate that the problems that we're having with, with with policing and everything is involving the black community. And I think we need more of us doing those things to show that all policemen aren't bad. You know, we want to help and we want to see our community move forward. Great words from from the police. We'll go to Fallon next. What what wise words would you leave us with today? If you're gonna if you're not gonna be a part of the solution, don't complain about the problem. So I feel like. If you're not going to help, don't say anything. And now we will move over to our Michelle from the fire fire department. Um, I would just say that um, don't be surprised. You just never know. And you never know how you're going to have to solve a problem. And you never know who you're going to have to solve it with. So just be ready. Very wise words. Thank you, Michelle. And we have one more hero to hear from. I think one of the most important things is to remember that these young people is 100% of our future, not 50, not 20%. They're 100% of our our future. Exposure is everything. Uh, When it comes to the black communities, fire, police, and I think one of our biggest problems is our lack of exposure. And I think once you expose these kids to opportunities, you get to change lives immediately. I think it can really change uh, the way the world view all the young people. Well, it's been so great to hear from everyone here today. I want to thank you again for your time and thank you to our viewers for joining us. And I just wanted to point out again that you are our heroes for a reason. You are the change makers. You are the people making a difference. So it's just so inspirational to be able to talk and meet with you here today. So I want to just thank you all once again and tell our viewers to just wait momentarily and they'll be returned to the main heroes event.